you arrest all variabilities. And when you do that, you kind of mechanize it. Like it just follows automatically. And nobody has to seek information. Nobody has to seek clarification. Nobody has to seek answers. And nobody has to go to anybody for anything at all. Growing a business requires a holistic approach that extends beyond sales and marketing. This approach needs alignment among people, processes, and technologies. So if you're a business owner, operations, or finance leader looking to learn growth strategies from your peers and competitors, you're tuned into the right podcast. Welcome to the WBS Podcast, where scalable growth using business systems is our number one priority. Now, here is your host, Sam Gupta. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the WBS Podcast. I'm Sam Gupta, your host and principal consultant at Digital Transformation Consulting Firm, Elevate IQ. There are a lot of definitions around Lean, but implementing it right is easier said than done. Most companies fail to implement Lean because they focus more on tools than focusing on strategy. It's a change in thinking, the way you do your business. It's the kind of SOPs you want to follow in your business and how flexible you want to be around those SOPs. The less variability and leaner operations you have, the more competitive you will be. If implemented right, lean could be your competitive advantage. In today's episode, we have our guest Sanjeev Batmangalkar, who discusses why lean is a strategy and thinking and why most companies fail with lean as they focus on tools. He also shares several stories of how he implemented lean at several facilities in various industries Finally, he shares numerous KPIs and execution strategies to help business executives implement Lean. Let me introduce Sanjeev to you. Sanjeev Batmangalkar is a pioneer of Lean in India and is an active Lean practitioner for the past 30 years. He is credited with the total Lean enterprise transformation of Mesor Kirloskar in India and Bridgeport Perkasa in Indonesia. Both initiatives were first of their kind in their respective countries. He is also a founder of India's leading lean consulting company, Stratman Consulting, and has worked in 30 different industry segments so far. He is a writer, publisher, blogger, and a keynote speaker. With that, let's get to the conversation. Hey, welcome to the show, Sanjeev. Hi, Sam. It's good to be with you. Okay, amazing. And I'm super excited to discuss Lean with you. Obviously, you spent a lot of time doing a lot of different projects. So I'm super excited to hear those stories. But before we do that, to kick things off, do you want to start with your personal story and current focus? Oh, sure. I got into Lean more by an accident, actually. This was about 30 years ago. Dr. Sean Berger, who wrote this book, World Class Manufacturing, he happened to be on a visit to India and was a keynote speaker at a function where he introduced the subject of, he was talking about what he saw in Japan about Japanese manufacturing. And he talked about his book, World Class Manufacturing, a Japanese manufacturing techniques. And he talked about just in time. Yeah. So after his keynote, my company decided that uh, we should get into doing this just in time stuff. And we had many factories under the umbrella of my company. And so they decided to pick up on one strategic business unit and said, OK, let's start doing it here. And a little after that, I was transferred to head that factory and take this forward at a point when I knew nothing about what just-in-time was, let alone anything else. The word lean was not even coined when we started our journey. And so all I had to start was there's a famous story about water flowing and boulders in the river. Okay. And it was just that one story that actually stuck with me, that stayed with me. And it was whatever little motivation I got from that story is what helped me go along this journey. So that's how we made our beginning. 
and we had no no consultant teaching us there was no sensei and in those days there were no books there were no seminars and there was absolutely nothing so based on what we had understood from what was translated out of dr schonberger's talk we had to take everything forward and in so many ways i think we were lucky because we had no distractions nobody telling us a variety of stuff and we stuck to the principles principles of of lean we did not know it so much in terms of terminologies or the phraseologies that came later on when Jim Womack's book on lean thinking came out and Dr Liker you know did such wonderful work with all his books so we didn't know all the terminologies but we actually did a lot of things or almost everything that has been talked about there we used the principles the concepts of pull the flow which we used to increase the velocity of movement of parts and assemblies reduce the inventory improve productivity quality and it was amazing what we did we knew we did not know the names of any tools but we almost used a lot of tools remember there are nearly 100 tools and techniques in toyota's basket of toyota production system not all of them are known outside the lean world so the effect of this we went along on this journey every day we were so passionate we were so much in a hurry we sacrificed so much to achieve what we did in about 2 years or under 3 years we had reduced our cost by about 60% and in about 3 years we had increased our sales volume by 500% our manpower went down by 25% we freed up about 35 to 40% of the space we brought in new products new technology without adding to capital cost and when i talk of velocities our throughput times went down from what was 45 to 60 days it went down to 2 and 3 days the, the employees were so motivated solved tens of thousands of problems when our costs reduced by 60% we shared this benefit with our customers i gave my customers 30% of it and we retained half of it so if you brought my my machines before that day for x dollars from the next day you paid me x dollars less 30% and so my competitors did not know what hit them they almost became redundant my customers were delighted the early 90s was the period of high recession and there were no orders but we had faced that situation of no orders we had even gone through a closure we had to close the factory for no orders but now during the recession with what we had done we had a different kind of problem and that problem was we had so many orders and we had to figure out how to execute them so even my competitors came to me and said sanjeev you can't give desperate discounts like this they thought i was giving discounts they had no clue what had happened behind and what went on behind was what was a result of using lean strategies putting lean thinking in place and working on just in time concepts so when i moved on to indonesia i had a different kind of a problem and i was actually running six different manufacturing businesses there and one of them which was also a machine tool company it was a joint venture with bridgeport and the thing was this company existed for 5 years and the bridgeport guys actually sat there and ran the factory people were taken to usa trained in usa how to build machines the plant and equipment was there the manpower was there in 5 years salaries were paid but they had never produced machine serial number 1 and so when the chairman told me i don't know what to do with this i said will you relax we will turn this around all we had to do was put lean thinking in place and inside of 6 months there was so much of activity in that factory we had customers from all over the world ordering machines sending us letter of credits and the factory was thumping out production i was told this was a very prestigious collaboration and on a given day the president of indonesia those days you know was a lady 
Sukarno Putri. She, along with her ministers and the American ambassador, landed in front of my factory on the football field in a helicopter. They came to see what is this magic that turned this around. It was just putting in place the right lean strategies and proper lean thinking. So this is what lean can do. This is what lean is about. We never talked about tools. We did use them. Tools are there to solve problems, but it's not about tools. It's all about strategy. Lean is complete strategy work. Lean is about thinking. It's about those principles. It's about those philosophies. And it's about how you use them can be applied to any business process. Doesn't matter what. Okay, amazing. Thanks for uh, a great story. So now one of the questions that we always ask before we dig deeper into your background and some of the amazing work that you have done in terms of getting those KPIs, obviously that is a very impressive work. But before we do that, one of the standard questions we have for all of our guests, and that is going to be, Sanjeev, your perspective on growth. When you think of business growth, what does it mean to you? Well, uh, you see, when you talk about growth to me, I look at it in a few different ways. Now, any business, first of all, should be a contributor into the GDP of that particular nation. And it's just not contribution into GDP. Any business needs to contribute into the aspirations of that nation, which can include people, which means along with that growth should come also by providing growth in economy, growth in jobs. And if all these components are there, then that's a good growth. It's just not measuring the top line and the bottom line. Growth, if you just look at the financial sheet, you can say this grows, but the real value addition might have been done elsewhere. So if I talk of growth and I look at a business in a particular country, then that business needs to contribute to that particular country's economy growth and growth also in terms of number of jobs. So that is growth. Okay, amazing. So let's talk about some of the manufacturing situations that you have had. And you bring a very unique experience to the table, uh, especially the lean consultants that we have interviewed in the past. They did not have as much international experience as you have. So I'm super curious in understanding the manufacturing differences and the lean differences. When you look at, let's say you worked in India, you worked in Japan, you worked in the US, right? And, and also Indonesia. So when you look at the manufacturing landscape in all of these countries, what are some of the differences and similarities that you have seen in all of these countries from your perspective? Uh, if I should uh, stay with the subject of lean and what I see in different countries, Lean is understood differently in different places. And while lean really is all about strategy, you we actually begin with the customer in mind. We need to understand the customer before we actually embark on the lean journey. We need to understand customer demands. We need to understand the problems that need to be solved. We need to understand whether we have the products that can solve the problems. And we need to evolve a product strategy which can do that. And we need to streamline the variables there. When I say we need to streamline the variables, it's not the demand variability because the demand variability is always going to be there. And that is exactly what we address in Lean. But we need to minimize variability that takes place otherwise. Now, for example, organizations are very used to using the OR tool of forecasting. And so when you use forecasting techniques with whatever algorithms, this, that, everything, you still find that when you begin a particular year or period that you want to measure, very soon variability creeps in. And what we actually did in uh, Mysore Kaloskar is uh, we found a way to beat this because we started to measure the rate of demand. And then we were able to measure how the rate of demand was actually varying. And that helped us to define how our flow should be of material inside so that we can match the demand rate with our delivery rate or the sale rate. And so we gave up the idea of forecasting, which we had been using for decades, and we moved on to something else, which is measuring the consumption rate, because we felt consumption is the only truth out there in the marketplace, and nothing else really matters. So uh, we developed a tool how we can actually measure the rate of consumption, that is the actual market behavior, and then design our processes behind it to actually match that so that we could just deliver to that rate and deliver to a customer. So that is where 
the work in lean actually begins and then you get into the other part of the value stream now this first part is very important to do because this is like the marketing side or the customer interface is like the engine of a train and if this engine starts jerky movement then the whole train is going to jerk so we want the engine right to be smooth and so all variabilities have got to be arrested here and one of the ways we did that was we actually wrote down nine uh, governing policies these were written down signed and nobody had the authority to go beyond that and if i should say it another way this was like mechanizing or automating the marketing function itself and so this allowed us to bring in an order as soon as an order came in we had a method of writing a signal card so this is the kanban visual kanban system we wrote a signal card the card went into a pigeon hole at a particular place inside the factory and from that moment onwards the workmen took charge and they were in charge until the machine was packed and delivered there was no intervention of supervisors or managers in between and the whole system was honed such that the workers would be able to run including pulling material from vendors and because we wanted the workers more to be on the job we also designed a visual factory where a worker does not have to go behind excel sheet or computer screens but could be on his work spot doing his work and what he saw would give him a visual signal and he could take an action based on that so that's how a lean journey actually progresses that's how you actually set up everything when you get into talking about a module then it is not in my opinion that is not lean you can call that as productivity improvement you might show improvement a little bit here a little bit there will it really show up on your balance sheet on your profit and loss account i don't know but it did on our in our case and in terms of valuation the valuation of the company went up 10 or 12 times more so it's like what is your bigger picture what do you want to achieve what is your difficulty and what do you want to overcome then what do you want to achieve what is the vision you are seeing do you have patchy problems that you want to solve in which case productivity improvement may do the job but do you want to do something else like lean really is the best known competitive strategy today there is nothing better and it can give you the best competitive advantage over your competitors like nothing else it's an end to end solution and so that's how a lean journey actually progresses and a lot of people try a lot of different things i see them because i see them every day people talk to me there are so many different thinkings there are so many different approaches which unfortunately have been used and i would like to say that we the lean community might have actually been partly responsible to have messed this up because when lean really is strategy it's a way of how to think we started calling it lean tools we started calling it lean manufacturing it actually is not restricted to the manufacturing itself it's end to end in application it starts with your customer it ends with your last vendor and everything in between including the way you do your costing the way you deal with the finances everything everything is engulfed included in it okay so let's talk about the consumption rate that you mentioned and some of the audience may not be familiar with what a consumption rate is versus the delivery rate and demand rate that you mentioned right yeah so do you want to touch a little bit on that yeah. uh, you know if let's say i have the small to medium sized manufacturer and i am the cfo of the small to medium sized business and i have no idea how to basically measure the the consumption rate and uh, i may be measuring some of the apis right now but i don't know how to number one set up these kpis how to continuously measure and make sure that i am getting the value out of my lean strat so let's say if you okay. were the manufacturing cfo sanjeev so how would you approach this how would you what are these kpis and what would be your advice in terms of setting up these kpis okay see why do we need to measure consumption basically because it's behind this that everything else actually takes place now if we don't measure consumption and let us say we work to a forecast these are the two situations when we work to a forecast 
maybe if we start our financial year on 1st of January and we say our forecast for this year is like this. January, we are going to produce X number of products and February is going to be X plus something. March is going to be X minus something and so on and so forth. And what happens is we, yes, we can produce to those numbers that we have forecasted. But behind that, we need to invest in producing those products. That means we need to buy that raw material, we need to engage the resources, we need to do everything to be able to produce those numbers. And in the end, if those numbers don't flow out, then we are stuck with a problem. This is number one. Number two, there's another kind of problem that exists in uh, conventional manufacturing. When we are in business, what is it that we really want to do? I would like to find a customer, go to a customer, get his order, produce his product as fast as I can, give it to him and collect my money. That's all I'm interested in. That's the cycle to complete. How fast I complete it is my efficiency. The one who does it the fastest actually is the winner. And so if what does this mean? Now, this means that if my month has got 25 days and if I am supplying, let us say, 100 units of whatever during the month, if I supply 100 units in the last week, that is bad. That's very bad. Ideally, I would like to supply four every day so that on the 25th day, I've completed my 100. That is efficient stuff. So if I have to do that, then four units need to get consumed every day which means I need to set up my marketing activities such that that flow is continuous. And so I need to measure that. I need to measure what's my consumption going to be. And how do we do that? We, you can fall back on data that you already have for the last one year, two years, three years, and try to understand how was the inflow every day. You can do a running average or you can find some other algorithm for it to find out what would have been the closest if you if you had forecasted a number not through the conventional forecasting but by looking into the crystal ball now after you have defined a way how to calculate the consumption rate and this rate can be calculated on a monthly basis on a weekly basis on a daily basis depending on your volumes now automotive sector higher volumes etc can be done almost on a daily basis something else slightly slow moving can be weekly basis lesser numbers can be on a monthly basis it also depends on what goes into building up that product and how fast you really can build it so that's the reason why you need to do that. So what we try to do in Lean is we know for sure that the demand every day is not going to be the same. It is going to be up and down. And what we try to achieve, we try to achieve the behavior in our manufacturing to comply with that demand so that we can match that demand curve in terms of what we deliver, how we deliver when we deliver and ensure that it is within the expectation of the customer and not beyond. So it's to do that, we need to measure how the demand comes in. We measure how we execute, which is we, we called it as the sale rate, is the rate at which the products were getting dispatched out of the factory. Now, if you have your demand coming in at the rate of X number of units every day, if you're able to sell the same X number of units every day, you're absolutely matching the demand. You will run a very thin and lean factory with the least number of inventory, hassles, etc., most efficient form. So how do we achieve that? These are some of the techniques that we use to be able to achieve that, to match the way that curve behaves. Okay, so you mentioned a couple of things about your nine governing policies, but yeah. I don't know if I missed those policies, but do you want to dig into those? What were those nine governing policies? Uh, try to describe each of those because uh, our audience may not be familiar with some of the lean concept, right? So can you go over all of those nine and tell us how companies can benefit from these nine governing policies? I will talk about it in principle because those policies were specific to my company. It might not be applicable as it is to everybody else, but the principles can be used. Okay. And the principles were based on understanding what were the processes that happened in that process of the customer and the company interface, which, which is the space, the marketing space. Now, I'll give you examples. For example, like we had to get an order. So we expect that an order must have a certain amount of advance 
paired up with the order. So we spec what should be this percentage. Should it be 10? Should it be 15? Should it be 20? We had put a we had put a number to it. And this was so that an order is not just a piece of paper. It's come with certain commitment that yes, when you produce this product, I'm going to take this product away because now for me to produce a product, how much time did I need? I needed either two days or three days, depending on the size of the machine. Was it small? Was it big? So that was one. Second, we were able to put our finger and tell the customer exactly when the machine would be delivered, on which day. And so the full payment for the machine had to be made before that, before we dispatched the machine. It had to come in through the system. So that that had a policy. There was no waiver, no changes to this. Like, okay, here is my check, or you know, I am sending this to you, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There was absolutely nothing. The cash register had to ring in the money and the machine would then go. So it was like that. It was like on the service part, what were our commitments? What would we exactly do in terms of part? Where, how we'd make the parts available? In how much time would we attend to a, a complaint? How close would we carry parts to our customers? Because India is a big geography and our dealers in other countries, 43 other countries, this is a big geography. So where would we carry the parts and how much and what parts, etc. So it was like this. These policies will pertain specifically to the business process of a particular organization. And one needs to break down that process, what happens in that business process, into as many details as possible. And these policies are used to plug every loophole so that you arrest all variabilities. And when you when you do that, you kind of mechanize it. Like it just follows automatically. And nobody has to seek information. Nobody has to seek clarification. Nobody has to seek answers. And nobody has to go to anybody for anything at all. And so that's how it works. Okay, amazing. So that's it for today. Sanjeev, do you have any last minute closing thoughts by any chance? Well, you see, uh, like I said, any business process, lean strategy is the best competitive strategy today. It, it's irrespective of what business you're in, whether it is manufacturing, information technology, financial institutions, hospitality, education, whatever it is. I have done work in 30 different industry segments so far, and lean can be applied everywhere. I did write a piece on LinkedIn the other day when I saw what was happening in the vaccination process and the delays were taking place. And people picked it up because that little publication went a little viral. It, people circulated that, people latched onto it. And I was able to see in many places that people have done what I had said, how do you overcome delays and the slowness in your vaccination process? So it can be applied anywhere everywhere. Lean is the best competitive strategy. If you want to gain competitive advantage over your competitors, distance them, go lean. And remember, lean is a strategy. Lean is all about thinking. It's not about tools. Okay, amazing. And my personal takeaway from this conversation is going to be lean could be your significant competitive advantage. So go lean. Thank you so much once again for your time and uh, your insights, Ajit. It's been a pleasure, Sam. I cannot thank our guests enough for coming on the show, for sharing their knowledge and journey. I always pick up learnings from our guests and hopefully you learned something new today. If you want to learn more about Sanjeev, head over to leanmanufacturing.consulting. It's L-E-A-N-M-A-N-U-F-A-C-T-U-R-I-N-G dot C-O-N-S-U-L-T-I-N-G. Links and more information will also be available in the show notes. If anything in this podcast resonated with you, and your business, you might want to check other related episodes, including the interview with Paul Critchley from New England Lean Consulting, who discusses practical examples of how to apply five S's of lean to your organization. Also, the interview with Ian Pratt, who discusses how to distinguish between the need for additional resources and operational bottlenecks that need to be optimized before investing further. Also, don't forget to subscribe and to spread the word among folks with similar backgrounds. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please review and rate us on your favorite podcasting platform or DM me on any social channels. I'll try my best to respond personally and make sure you get help. Thank you and I hope to catch you on the next episode of the WBS Podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the WBS Podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. 
For more information on growth strategies for SMBs using ERP and digital transformation, check out our community at wbs.rocks. We'll see you next time.